Has the green bubble already burst? Hello and welcome to today's Daily Blitz. In today's video, we'll be going over some interesting stories that have come out recently, which have led Nikolai here to believe that, uh, well, the green bubble has actually burst before it even got really, really big. So uh, this is some green companies that have encountered a lot of trouble recently, is that right? That's right. So the first thing is, is the data uh, from Reuters, I think it was, that published this. Uh, they found out that investment in clean energy in developing nations is down by a fifth. And meanwhile, coal investment is surging, which is the opposite of the narrative of a green bubble, really. Right. And as part of that, we've had in China, uh, one of the biggest solar panel companies in the world, solar panel manufacturers, has gone bust. Um, they were sponsoring the World Cup of, uh, of football at one point, and in the end, it's, it's all gone badly, badly wrong. Is this uh, an absence of subsidies then uh, that's caused this, or is there something else going on? They're still being subsidized, but the issue is that basically there's just not enough demand for this within China, and China was at one point rolling out a huge amount of solar panels. Right, yeah, China was seen as like a pioneer for green energy, right? So in terms of just the, the broader demand side, because you, all, you often hear uh, an awful lot from environmental activists and also from uh, investors wanting to be more uh, ESG friendly, as it's called. Uh, I mean, is there just not enough demand for this, or is it simply too expensive? to create that supply? We don't really know. Um, it's just not clear. But it really, in the end, it doesn't pay to produce these big solar panel farms yet, which is why China's just not doing it. Um, the article about this solar panel manufacturer that went bust pointed out that the place that it manufactures these solar panels is basically covered in smog, which really sort of is, is a telling little anecdote about the nature of this boom. But uh, further to that, I mean, you hear, you see, in fact, all of the major car manufacturers coming out with electric vehicles and the like. Uh, pretty much every car, car manufacturer now has uh, at least unveiled some kind of concept. Hmm. Uh, and then you have a lot of the major ones, including the luxury ones, uh, going for, uh, you know, a big big push for an electric vehicle, Aston Martin, Porsche, etc. Uh, I mean, does this, uh, do you think those are going to bust it, go bust as well? Or? Well, uh, Hans Werner Zinn, the German economist, released a, a very controversial article in a few different newspapers, I think it was a week ago now, where he basically claimed that these are environmentally friendly cars, electric power cars, actually emit more CO2 than diesel cars did. Now, that stirred all sorts of controversy, and there's been lots of debunking about his claims, but there are plenty of studies that basically claim that diesel and, and existing vehicles don't really pollute significantly more than electric vehicles because of how most countries produce the energy that actually goes into powering those electric vehicles. So in the example that Hans Werner Zinn used, it was Germany, which uses a lot of coal power. And of course, that just means the emissions just happen elsewhere. So in the end, even electric cars are being put under question or under a cloud of doubt. Well, I think that would certainly require a lot of the, the narrative around electric cars to change quite substantially, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you'd need to see it you know, really quite, uh, quite, um, quite viscerally just across uh, the, the print media, in fact, saying that we were all wrong about electric cars. Uh, to me, I think, before that, before that would really occur. But if you are indeed correct, then uh, it seems like there's just been a massive misallocation of capital, right? Yeah, that's, that's really my claim. The underlying point I'm trying to make is that Usually, the price tells you what is worth investing in and what is not worth investing in, in terms of the cost of the energy, the price of the car, and so on and so forth. But once you don't have an accurate market price, it causes a misallocation of capital. People buy cars that are not actually efficient. Right. People produce energy in ways that doesn't make sense. And so based on the amount of manipulation of prices in clean energy, whether it's on the demand side with cars or the supply side with solar panels, it's created this bubble of investment, and that's already collapsing. So whenever the subsidies for solar panel are taken away, investment collapses. Whenever the subsidies for renewable energy, um, it collapses. Whenever the subsidies are taken Tax away, for credits for yeah. cars. Yeah. And the cars, we've seen that happen, especially in Europe, where the sales of, of electric cars collapses as soon as the subsidy is removed. So my point really for investors is, it's a really dangerous area to be investing in. This is a bubble that's, you know, really very thin air inside the bubble. Right, right. So investing in green tech funds are a very risky play, even if you are even if you are expecting ever, ever more allocation into it. Well, there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed today's Daily Blitz. Be sure to tune in next time.